Hello, vlog people. I'm back from my hike. I'm doing a part two today because I might be out of commission for a couple of days. Um, might not be able to vlog for a couple of days, and I wanted to get to some of these questions that have been standing. So I'm doing a double vlog today. Very ambitious. Lee, 2007. Without looking, can you tell us what kind of vacuum you own? Electrolux. No cheating. Didn't have to. Believe it or not, someone asked me that question, and I did not only know, but I had to ask where we kept it. I have no idea where it is. I just know it's an Electrolux. You know why? Because when we need the Electrolux canister bags, it goes on the, on the list. Be in touch, Lee. Does that mean your house is filthy or that you have people, servants, doing everything for you? I have Gloria, but I don't consider her a servant. I consider her my family. I'm not mad at you! I'm mad at the dirt! She's not even speaking to me. Okay. Barry SXJ. What time of day were you born? My birthday is June 5th. My birthday is June 4th. I think I was born at like 7.20 or 7, 7.20, 7.30 in the morning. I'm not sure the exact time. But um, it was raining and the sun came out. <laughs> okay, there's so much myth around my birthday. There were the, the wise men and the star and the whatever. Sam, when my six-year-old was an infant, I would play standard time in the car for him and sing blue eyes to him in place of blue skies. Isn't that sweet? My dad passed away nine years ago, but I see him every day in Alex's blue eyes. That's lovely. Could you please sing the verse? Blue eyes shining at me. Nothing but blue eyes do I see for Alex. You're asking a lot, Mo. Okay. I mean, it doesn't sound like a lot, but if it's horrible, then it seems like a lot because it's morning. Blue eyes shining at me. Nothing but blue eyes do I see. Blue birds are singing their song. Nothing but blue birds all day long. That's all the blue eyes part, wouldn't it be? We'll just do that. Blue eyes are shining at me. Nothing but blue eyes do I see. Alex, blue eyes. That's just lovely. Okay, enough of that. It's morning. I'm sorry. I normally warm up. Blue eyes. Wow, I don't usually sing until it's a little later or I'm warmed up. Sorry about that. Okay, what else is there? What do you think of the new production of Grease? Have you seen it in previews on Broadway? And did you watch the TV show? I have not seen it in previews on Broadway, and I probably won't see it at all on Broadway. I watched part of the TV show, and I couldn't believe it, actually, because what they did through this whole process of an entire season is something that would take, like, two days in New York. So it was sort of letting in on the privy, but the... Jeez. And you know what? I've heard not good things. Now, having been in a production of Grease that was kind of slammed by the critics... <laughs> um... <clears throat> But God, it was fun, and great people, Rosie O'Donnell, Megan Mullally, Jessica Stone, Hunter Foster, Susan Wood, it was great people. Um, anyway, I've heard not great things about this, and I'm not surprised, because I think it's kind of, it's such a marketing ploy to cast it this way, it's like, it doesn't matter what the quality is, as long as people are coming because they invested from a TV show thing, I don't know. It's weird, I've not heard happy things. I want it to be good, I want everything to be good. I want everything to be good. It makes it easier for other things to happen. But it's, uh, it, didn't, it didn't start out with a good thing, with the whole concept of like the money grubbing. Uh, okay. Uh, on a previous blog, you mentioned that your depression may have come from your alcoholism. Can you clarify? Okay. Um, well, actually, I, I might have been... I think I said that my depression, that I wasn't chemically imbalanced necessarily, but that, my per that I became very depressed as an alcoholic and with the alcohol, and that was the chemical that made me depressed. I'm not sure that was completely correct because I think I drank because of my propensity for depression. I think I f drank to feel normal, to feel better. 
And then that tool, which worked for a long time, stopped working. So I think I do have a propensity for depression, and I did from an early age. And that was my tool to sort of get past it, which just made it worse in the long run over the years, made it much, much, much worse. Um, but again, what I said before, which I still think is the truth, is that the key to those things is, is release of bondage of self, which is getting outside of yourself, and the only way to do that is by doing things for other people. It releases resentment, it puts goodness into the world, and it immediately relieves me of the burden of self. Anyway, I hope that was more explanatory. Um, oh, done that. Okay, and finally, what advice would you give to someone who's 36 and wants to get into the business? With a spouse, two kids, Sam, 16, and Kira, 5, excellent names, and two dogs of my own, I have to work full-time right now, but would like any direction you could give me. You know what? I would not worry about the business part of it. I would do something for your soul. You're 36. You have all these beautiful things filling your life. Um, that doesn't mean that your soul isn't craving something artistically to fulfill it. So I don't know if you mean as an actor. I don't know if you mean as a singer. I don't know what... But there's lots of ways to do this without putting the condition on it of, of it being the way you make your living or that you're going to be, you know, in the tabloids or whatever it is. Um, so as far as it being too late, never, never, never. But look at, you know, why. And, and look at how full your life is. And this is an extension. This is the part of your soul you haven't been able to nurture because your focus has been on your family and, and children and work. So this is something else. This is something that can fulfill you now at a time in your life when that is okay. It wasn't necessarily your priority before, which is fine, and now it is your priority. So you can do it, but you don't have to put a lot of weight on it. We all do that, especially in this country. Everybody wants to be famous. For what? For nothing most of the time. Follow your bliss. Do something to make you feel good. Say something to make you feel good. Put it out there in the world. Don't put success and failure on it. It's so easy to do, especially when money's involved or approval is involved or what other people think is involved. So whoever's listening to this, a couple of things. When I say do something wonderful for somebody, really try it. Really, really try it. A stranger. Do it anonymously. Do it for someone you love. And secondly, if there's something that you've been denying, that you've been pushing down, that you love to do, whether it's paint or, or, or you know, sing or write or act or do whatever, explore it. Go into it. Take off the burden of what it's supposed to be, of what it's supposed to accomplish, of what other people think of it. Do it for you. That's how art emerges. When you're trying to say something, when you need to say something, when you need to express something, that's when my best work comes. It's by healing yourself that you heal others. And by healing others that you heal yourself. It's a wonderful cycle. All right, I'm not going to go up to the very second on this one. I'm just going to leave you with this. And um, have a great, great, great day. And go do something for someone. Wonderful. Or go do something wonderful for someone. All right, peace to you.